Hi, welcome to Victoria Knits. I'm Victoria. We are at Flathead Lake again today. We got up at 4 a.m. so we could come down here to watch the sunrise. We're at the opposite side of the lake than we were in my last podcast. Uh, we wanted to talk about knitting <laughs> while we're here. I finished my flow wrap. Um, Cappy at the Yarn and I had an autism awareness cow and I knit this um, to go along with that. I knit this out of light fingering because that's what I had and I wanted to use it up. So I started out with this teal for the background where the yarn overs are and then for the garter stitch stripes I did multicolors. And then I didn't have any more of that, so I went to gray for the next section for about a third. And then after that, I finished it off with this maroon. And um, I like the way it turned out. It's a lot of different colors, but it's, to me, it's kind of muted, and I think it's really pretty. It's a lighter wrap. I used a um, one full-size smaller needle than the pattern called for because I was using light fingering and I think it turned out really nice. I think it's going to be a nice little summer wrap for myself. So um, I'm glad I got it done. Uh, if we get some decent sunrise pictures, we'll definitely show them and uh, I'll have at least one more finished object to show you later in this podcast. Hi. Well, that sunrise was not what I would call fabulous. It's hard to complain about a sunrise though, isn't it? <laughs> so right now I've gotten up hoping there'll be um, on maybe a better sunrise, if you want to call it that, but it doesn't look like there will be. I am this, this morning, I am at Little Bitterroot Lake. Uh, for this sunrise, I uh, didn't have to get up near as early. I got up at five because this lake is only about 10 minutes from us. So much easier. <laughs> um, it's a pretty little lake, but you know, there's no clouds in the sky, so it doesn't look like it's gonna be a great one this morning either. As I said, this lake is, um, Gosh, much, much, much smaller than Flathead Lake. Flathead Lake is huge. But this one is about 10 minutes from our house. So that's nice. We come down here, we have come down here once and um, put our canoe on the lake and that was really nice. So I, one thing I wanted to do was thank everybody for watching. If you're a new subscriber, thanks for checking me out. If you're coming back, that's great. If you would like to hit the um, subscriber button to know when I'm going to put out a new podcast, you are welcome to do so or um, give me a like, that'd be great. I, um, I want to give a shout out this morning to Kevin in the great state of Maine, clear across the country. 
um, he said that he watched one of my podcasts while he was in the hospital. And I hope you're feeling better, Kevin. I hope your health is improving. I hope you're able to get some knitting done. And um, please um, give Buddy a little scratch behind the ears or whatever. You know how much I like cats. <laughs> so, hi, Kevin. Uh, speaking of cats, Josie and Freddie will be going back to uh, my daughter and her family uh, this week. Uh, my daughter and her family have a permanent house now that does not include a person who is allergic to cats. So, good for them. They get their cats back. We will miss, we'll at least miss Freddie. He's got quite the personality. I also wanted to talk about all the fiber fests that have been going on. Um, I'll probably, chances are I'll never make it to Rhinebeck, but you got to take advantage of what's close to you if you can. And so I plan on doing that. There is a fiber fest Eureka in northern Montana um, in August, the first weekend of August. So my husband and I are planning on going. It should be a pretty drive. Now I don't ex it's not going to be a big a big festival. When I looked on the website, there's going to be like five vendors, and that, that won't seem like much to a lot of people, but you know, five vendors, so <laughs> it shouldn't it shouldn't it shouldn't be overwhelming, is what you know I'm kind of thinking, and it shouldn't be exhausting, so that's fine. We'll go up there for the day. Your, the town of Eureka is very small, and it's about an hour, hour and a half drive from our house. So not bad. We can go up there for a day. They do say they'll have lots of animals. So I'm, I'm excited to see that. And they're going to have some competitions, some classes. Um, mostly we're just going to go up there, um, check things out, relax. Hopefully, um, I know there'll be at least two places selling yarn. One of them has Angora goats. So I'm anticipating perhaps a purchase of some Angora yarn. <laughs> Pretty exciting, right? So, um, yeah, upcoming events. <laughs> I didn't bring any yarn with me this morning. I was really hoping for, you know, a gorgeous, spectacular sunrise. But any sunrise is a good sunrise is kind of my mantra at this point. <laughs> the sun comes up, it's a new day. Um, let's enjoy it, right? Uh, we're, uh, Kim and I are taking a little road trip today and we have stopped at Kootenai Falls. Kootenai Falls is on the Kootenai River. It's named after the local Native American Kootenai tribe and it's a very, it's a sacred spot for them. They used to consider it the center of the universe. I think that's kind of cool. So we'll finish our little short walk down to the falls in a minute and I'll take some video of the falls but I wanted to show you my close to you shawl is actually getting bigger I've been able to get some work done on it and it is um, in the Wonder Woman project bag I won in a giveaway from Tesla Knits I will leave her link to her Etsy shop in the drop down bar it's a really cute little bag I love it it makes me feel like a Wonder Woman, <laughs> which I think who doesn't need that, right? <laughs> anyway, so my close to you shawl, as you can see, it's growing. Um, I like the way it's turning out. I was reading on the pattern the other day. She has a nice story on there as to um, why she designed this shawl. And she has another shawl that has cables on it. And I love the story on that one too. So if you get a chance, 
I would definitely um, check out her patterns. This one, this close to you shawl, happens to be a free pattern. Um, and uh, you can also make it larger if you have, it's a one skein, but if you have, um, you know, more, more skeins of the same yarn or if you want to mix it up, you can just keep growing. I guess you can do that. Uh, there's quite a few shawls you can do that with. But I thought it was really nice. And I love her little stories that she, that she um, includes with her patterns on Ravelry. I think they're really cool. So let's go check out the falls. Hi, we are at Lake Ponderé, which is the largest lake in the state of Idaho. Yes, we're in Idaho right now. Um, Ponderé Lake is named um, for earrings. Ponderé actually means earrings, and they named that because the Indians that uh, the Native American Indians that used to live here, the Kalispell tribe, wore big earrings in their ears and it was a uh, French Canadian trapper who named the lake so that's why it's in French. <laughs> anyway it's a very popular very beautiful lake. Population of Sandpoint is about 8,000 people. I did bring some knitting to show with me. I have another finished object and um, I got my daughter-in-law's Green Bay socks finished. This is one of my Christmas projects. Uh, so we're back to getting some Christmas gift knitting done. <laughs> and I made my own sock blocker out of cardboard. <laughs> Just so I could show it to you. Because if I showed it like this, you would think that that sock wasn't going to fit anyone but some little skinny dog or something. But it actually stretches out and it's not it isn't you know totally stretched out on this sock blocker it's fine I'm pretty confident it'll fit her so I'm glad to have that done uh, this is the first time I've actually seen Ponderé Lake it's gorgeous and the beach they have here just at the edge of town I mean you're basically you're almost in downtown Sandpoint is just beautiful it's huge uh, lots of things for the kids to do. Very, very pretty. I'm impressed. Very nice. Hi, we're at Priest Lake, Idaho. Priest Lake got its name from the Jesuit priests that settled here when the uh, local Na Native Americans were still living here. They started calling this lake black robe in their own language and then eventually that just got kind of slurred into Priest Lake and that's where it's got its name. Priest Lake is, is gorgeous. It's a quite a large lake. It's about 19 miles long but there's also an upper Priest Lake which makes it longer and at the northernmost point it is only like 15 miles from the Canadian border. It's gorgeous here. You can tell it's a beautiful day. And uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I finished my summer top for the Slow Ass Knitters Knit Along. Um, when I first showed this to my husband, when it was just about finished, when I first showed it to Kim, he said, wow, you better like pink. So, so that's what I'm calling it. I'm calling it the you better like pink summer top. I do like it. I like pink. Uh, this the pattern is the Lake Michigan tea and uh, one adjustment I did make was I I split the sides down here 
Um, so I would have um, a little better room for my hips and I like the way that turned out. Also, my, my goal when I made this tea was to use stash. I didn't want to have to buy new yarn to make this. So I, I struggled to find some, some yarn I had that uh, went with each other. And I'm like a lot of um, knitters, I think, where I like to buy beautiful fingering yarn, but it's usually patterned. And I really need to add to the tonals in my collection and start looking to add those kind of things so I can mix them up and do some, you know, have more options when I knit. But anyway, I like the way it turned out. It fits, which is, you know, a pretty, pretty important part. And I, I know this top isn't for everybody, but I do love pink. So it works for me. Another finished object um, that I got finished in the last few weeks was Russell's flax light sweater. I made this in size two to four. It's a little big for him. I tend to do that with my grandchildren. I tend to make things a little oversized because I think they're going to get more use out of it because it'll, they'll, it, they'll, it'll fit them longer. Um, but anyway, I like the way it turned out. It looks it looks really nice. Russell needs some crackers. <laughs> the yarn is Lolo did its um, Welcome to the Jungle. And Russell is staying with us for the next few days. Hi, buddy. <laughs> and then we'll be joined by the rest of the family. His parents will be here, and my son and daughter-in-law, and um, their two children. So I'll have all three grandchildren here at once. Really looking forward to it. I wanted to officially introduce my husband, Kim. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> He's been helping me out with uh, my hey, podcasts uh, lately, holding the camera and telling me to look into the camera, look into the camera, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, it has, he has been a big help lately, and he's been very patient as we do two or three takes of certain things because we mess stuff up. <laughs> or the lighting was bad, but whatever. Um, anyway, so the family will be here, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing them. There won't be much knitting done that week, but that's fine. Family is super important. <laughs> so, um, oh, I'm going to end this podcast with a, uh, uh, some short videos of some animal activity around here. Some of them are wild and some are domestic. The horses do not belong to us. They are on loan uh, from a friend who just lives uh, about a mile away. And um, uh, he uh, grazes his horses on our property. They help keep the grass down for fire season, so it's great. Anyway, um, thanks so much for watching and see you in, I don't know, a few weeks to a month. Ah, bye from Montana. Right now. <laughs>